The Great Pyramids of Giza, the Eiffel Tower, the Empire State Building, and now possibly the greatest accomplishment of all. I finally found a goddamn essence berry bush. Hello everyone, welcome back to Regrowth. Yep, it's... I, I, I got really unlucky. I was digging around for hours and hours and hours and I... It, it took that long to finally find one of these. I don't know if I was digging at the wrong Y level or what, but it took for freaking ever. Anyway, as you can see, I have it here under the sprinklers. And I have all these concentrated essence berries. And the first chapter is complete. Our first three chapters are complete, actually, and we have a couple of other completed chapters just on there. Yeah. Gives us six more of the bastards, a, a useless set of iron armor, and a title. Force of Habit. Let's see, does this, does this do anything good? It, it gives me absolutely nothing. Neat. Well, I'm just gonna tear this whole thing down because, I mean, here, here look, Th these are what these things do. They give you a tiny bit of XP. That's it. If I want XP, I can make bottles of enchanting from Mob Essence. Ugh. So completely useless. Why? Why? Anyway, that of course was not the only thing I did. If you're looking at my hearts, you may see a pretty blue color. Um, okay, I guess that's just a feature now. Yes, that is because I farmed the Gaia Guardian Mark II a couple of times, and I managed to find myself a Ring of Odin. This gives me tons of lovely effects. It's another layer of drowning and fire protection and all that. It slightly increases my health regeneration, and it gives me 10 more hearts of health. So we are up past what just baseline Tinker's Construct can do. Throw all this garbage out. <clears throat> and you'll see that I fixed my divination sigil thing it turns out that the sanguine helmet is in fact it, it does in fact take up a slot so i had to remake my helmet but fortunately that is actually rather easy let me get something to show you this see i set up another ritual oh yes and i have i have moved in the applied energistics i ran a line down to here because i decided that after all I wanted an export bus on this thing to keep it stocked automatically. This export bus has a crafting card, which means that if it needs to get more and there's none in storage, it will craft that sandstone. So effectively, with our mob essence being farmed, I now have infinite precantatio in that tank forever. Anyway, what I need is my weak activation crystal. And I will just run you on over to our ritual of unbinding. Yes, you see I have the Soul Armor Forge right here. This ritual, it's it kind of looks like a taller version of the ritual of binding. Anyway, all that you need to do is you need to put any piece of... Hello. Goodbye. You need to put any piece of bound armor or any anything you bound. Like, I can unbind my my sword if I wanted to. Get back the Elementium sword. Just do that, and you do that. Ooh. Anyway, you want to be standing on the Master Ritual Stone when you do that, because as you see, there's fires everywhere and you can lose things. Anyway, yeah. And it gives you back all the items that it's made out of. So you can just rejigger your armor whenever you want. Tinker with it and figure out what the best combo is. As you can see, I 
redid my pants because I needed to move that sigil of the blood lamp to somewhere for my night vision. So not only am I breathing out my pants, but I'm seeing out them too. Don't think about it. Lovely. Today's agenda is to start automating more of the things. We have got most of the infrastructure we are going to need for the end game at this point. It's just a matter of gathering resources. That is going to bother me. Hopefully it'll go away. <clears throat> Specifically, we're going to need tons and tons of stuff for that fusion reactor. Come on, textures, load up. And for that, we are going to need all the mechanism stuff first off. So let's make a really quick enhanced alloy automation. I, I think I'm going to keep these four machines up here just for manual use, and I am going to have the automatically running machines down here in the basement. I think that is what I am going to do. So first of all, let's program some patterns, because I can't auto-craft metallurgic infusers yet. So that's all really easy sauce. I just need a steel casing. And I'm probably going to have to get feeds from those rolling machines going in this episode, too. Okay. And yes, I can auto-craft enrichment chambers. I don't need to, but I'm going to. Ah, like I said, I need the feeds from these things. So, enrich. And... Metallurgic. Okay. So, let's set this up just like over here. It doesn't particularly matter. So let's have the interface on the back. And I'll just, well, let's, let's move it forward a little bit. And I'll just hook it up from the dents over there. Now, there is a special thing about ME interfaces. Not only do you put patterns in them to order them to order up um, materials, but if you just put a material in them in this slot, they will permanently keep a stock of it. If I take out that stack of iron, it pulls another from storage. So, I can order this thing to be to keep stock of redstone and iron. And then I can put a logistical sorter on it. And I can tell that to pull out. And I'm going to need some logistical sorters. Or, logistic transporters, yes. And I'm going to need my configurator. Good. So, I can draw those items out into the enrichment chamber and the metallurgic confuser. And I'm just going to set that up right here. Just like so. Now, obviously I'm going to want the logistical transporters on the back. Actually, I'm going to move these down another space. And actually, let's... There, that might do better. In which case, yeah, I can have these. Forgive me, I'm 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 improvising this, so I'm doing lots of futzing around. And I don't want these touching the interface, else it'll try and put into them directly. So Just need to do that, and that, and that. Then I need to color these. Let's make that one and that one. And then I need to tell the enrichment chamber to accept items.
from the back. Yes. And output auto eject. Metallurgic infuser accepts infusion from the top and accepts input from the back. And I will just put a logistical transporter on the side, tell it output auto eject yes. Okay. And then I just need to tell it on, well, I first need to reprogram this. And I just need to tell it redstone to dark blue. And I need to tell it iron to dark green. Okay. And that is actually enough to make... Hello, why aren't you making? Oh, it doesn't have power. Derp. That's okay, I can just run that down the front. Looks a bit ugly, but oh well. Yes, and there it goes, out into the system. And that is actually enough for the system to be making atomic alloys forever. But I do not want it to be making atomic alloys forever. So I am going to be making a ME level emitter. That's just a calculation processor and a redstone torch. Really simple. Still gonna auto craft it anyway, because just because it pays to make recipes as you start using them, you know. Okay, and I'm gonna put that, I guess, underneath. Yeah, that should do. Then I just need to hook it up to the cable. Okay, and I'm going to tell this thing that it only works on signal low. So, right now it's on signal high just because the emitter hasn't been programmed. But if I take these enriched alloys... I can tell it that, say when I have a hundred emit signal. Actually, let's just do a test. Let's get that down to say 40. Now, it's still going because I took all the enriched alloys out, but as soon as I put them back in, it stops. So, programmed as it is, it will keep on going until I have 40 enriched alloy. I, I don't want just 40, obviously. I want, say, a thousand enriched alloy at all times. So it will just work to keep that amount stocked. Neat, huh? Okay. And yeah, I don't think this is the only machine I'm going to want. So, and I think I can just do this right next to it. So, here and here. Okay, let's program the pipes. And it needs the back there just because the colors will clash otherwise. So this'll be one, two, three. And this'll be one, two, three, four. Yep. That's aqua and dark red, I believe. And then I just program the sides just like before. Input. Output, auto eject. Wait, why are you? That was weird. Okay. Infuse and input and auto eject. 
run the power down the sign. And I'm going to need another ME level emitter on the bottom. Which I guess just leaves this side here for the item output. Yeah, that's going to be a little bit messy. Oh well. Okay. Cable that up. And yes, these ME level emitters do each require a signal. Okay, so. Gonna need one of these, gonna need one of these, and gonna need diamonds. So we want this to stock enriched alloy, and we want this to stock diamonds. And we want this to look for reinforced alloy, and I'm just going to have 200 of them at all times. Slightly, you know, lots less than the, the basic ones, but still quite a large amount. Okay. So then I just need to tell this... That diamonds will go to Dark Aqua. Yes. And this go to Dark Red. And see, it is as simple as that. And I think I'm just going to go around the corner a little bit, give myself some space. Yeah. So, we want this to stock obsidian. Actually, let's... There. That's better. Let's just run this around the back. So, first things first is... Go up another space, yeah. What? No. Purple, make you purple. Stop sucking up redstone. So, we then tell it that obsidian goes on purple. That should start grinding that down to powder, okay? Next, I need... This is going to be a little bit of a kludge. Okay, so what color was diamonds going to? Diamonds are going to aqua. Very appropriate. Okay. So then this enrichment chamber goes here. And it's going to be accepting from the back and outputting to the right. Yes. Very good. Okay. So then this one will take input from there. Er, no, it'll take infusion from there. An input from there. Yes. Very good, very good. And then I need another enrichment chamber. I am out of these chipsets. <laughs> oh, I am completely out of those chipsets. Oh boy. 
Yes, an automated an automated laser table is in our future, I think. We aren't even close to tapping out the power here, though. It's no trouble. Okay, so this enrichment chamber... I think that's a good enough setting for it. Yep. Oh yes, and the side config, eject, yes. Okay, now we're automated, we're, we've got automated refined obsidian. Now I just need a final metallurgic infuser. And that should do it. Oh, and uh, yes, of course, I need the reinforced alloy to be stocked. And I could just have one of it sitting in there. First of all, let's color this. I'm going for the one after purple. That looks like indigo to me. Wait, did I ever sort the output for the reinforced alloy? I don't think I did, damn it. It's okay. Output auto eject. And let's just run it under for the most part. Over to there. There. Okay. Oh, this is looking glorious, isn't it? Okay, so. And then I need to tell it reinforced alloy. It's going to indigo. Need to put that there. So we want the infusion from there. Okay, infusion received. And we want input from there. Okay. And then we want just power from there. Okay. Now I just need to sort the output. Okay, and now I just need to tell it its limit. Yes, and before I forget, need to set the reinforced machine to redstone mode. Need to set this thing to redstone mode low. Want that redstone torch pointing upwards. Yes. I don't think that matters, but it might. Okay, and I will just tell that to stop at 100. Okay, there we go. All of the all of the mechanism alloys are automated. Completely automated. Isn't that a lovely little meso machinery over there? And actually, let me get a red smart cable. Let's, let's see how many channels this is eating up. There we go. Smart cable is just like regular cable, except it shows you how many channels are in use. There we go. Four out of eight. So that's 
One, two, three, four. Yep, the ME emitters each take up a channel. That one interface takes up a single channel. And that is all sorted. Let's actually put this on all the sides. It can be sometimes, it can sometimes be wise to do this just so that you know where all of your action is happening. Like those three channels is the terminal we have up top side. This one channel is going down to that automation we made for the VATS. Okay, so now I just need to facade this all back up and I'm done. One thing to note is that because I now have, oh yes, and I'm experimenting, never mind that, is because I have that logistical sorter sitting on the interface, it's now showing up in the interface terminal. Um, because that is not an interface I will be interacting with, I can just go into its interface here, the interface of the interface, <laughs> and I can say, don't show on terminal. And now, it's gone. Just keep yourself a nice clean terminal there. Where did you come from? Okay, you're officially trespassing. Frickin' weird. Okay. I did a little bit of experimenting and a little bit of agonizing, and I decided that I would just have these circuit boards manually crafting on order instead of auto crafting to a certain amount like the alloys because they aren't needed all that often. I can just like bulk order them when I need them. Anyway, as you can see here, I have a line of terminals um, because these are like, it would be a little bit difficult to route it through one terminal like we did for the automation down below. It would be possible, but I don't want to deal with it. Anyway, uh, the main difficulty is that they all require redstone, so it would be difficult to, like, tell it that the six redstone it ordered is going to this one instead of this one. Anyway, as you can see here, I just have the terminal, the interface sitting here. It has a pattern for the device. It inputs the goods, it outputs it back into the interface, and therefore back into the system. So let's program the rest of these. I have this carpenter here with the enhanced circuit boards. That's going to require three bronze and six redstone. So all I do is over in here in processing mode, I tell it to take three bronze and six redstone. And I need to tell it that that will produce an enhanced circuit board, excuse me. Ah, yes. And if you if you screwed up on a recipe and you want to redo it, you just take the pattern and you put it in there and see. And then when you reprogram, you just click the arrow and it's reprogrammed. So I take this, I put it in here, I sort the output. And now I should be able to bulk order these enhanced circuit boards. You see, all that all that stuff ends up in the carpenter. It crafts, it outputs, and then over in my uh, crafting terminal, you see it's crafting them all up. Now, there is a potential difficulty here because you see that crafting order is sitting in here. And you can only have as many crafting orders as you have um, as you have crafting computers. Actually, let's let's finish filling this out and I'll show you. So let's program this next one. And oh yes, as I'm going, I'm just hiding these because these terminals are only going to hold one recipe. Yeah, these carpenters are not really good for for mass automation. So let's take all this out. That produces that. Do the output. Do the pattern. Double check I have the recipe correct. Give it a test. And is that bronze one still going? Yeah. So if, if I then try to order these, 
Well, it does it now because yeah, you saw briefly how it was grayed out. Okay. So then if I try to order more of them, I can't because I have no processors available because all I have built over here are these two CPUs. You see there are two separate systems, but there's still only two of them. So I would have to build more if I want to ensure that I always have something available. I'll just be doing that. It's all materials you've seen me build before. And they're all auto-crafted anyway, and it's not exactly a complex system I'm assembling. This flavor of circuit. Hide that. And now I can just facade over the whole thing, I guess. Anyway, yeah, there's that all automated. Next up, I think I'm going to make a smallish laser table just to auto-craft some redstone chipsets. But I am going to need to do a lot of rune crafting to get all of the wrath runes for the laser table. And that's going to take a moment. I will just off-screen that. Oh, yes, and before I forget, in the... Uh, yes, I, I, I decorated this area a little bit. I just kind of hid the logistics transporters. I figured the power cables are okay to leave out. And I upgraded the the uh, basic alloy one to a factory version because I noticed that it was it was only keeping up with the other two machines. So I wanted I want those to be at a you know constantly coming in because they're used more often. The reinforced can I can wait on. That doesn't need to be a factory version. Maybe I'll put a speed upgrade or something in it, just so it produces slightly faster than the atomic. Anyway, there is a minor sort of semi-exploity thing I can do, by the way, to help save me on, on, uh, on headaches. If I order, say, I don't know, 200 of these circuit boards, that would just be in hell forever. But I can just sit here and cancel it. And because these carpenters have an internal buffer, all that stuff is still pretty much just sitting in there, and it'll it'll craft up still. Like, I I might have to manually empty it out later on, but yeah, I can I can do pretty sizable bulk orders and then just cancel it, and it'll still do the crafting because all the goods are being stored inside the carpenters. But I am still, of course, going to build more processing towers, just because it is good to have those, and they are relatively cheap. Okay, this ended up being a lot cooler than I expected it to be, and I only realized after I'd finished building it that I probably should have filmed building it. So, while making all the wrath runes for, to make the lasers, I realized that I'm going to need to make lots of runes of winter, and to make that, I'm going to need to make lots of cakes. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem, because milking cows by hand for that many runes is not fun. So, I experimented around, and I realized that I misremembered, and or it's been changed, and stripey pipes do not milk cows. So I kind of had to do it the Batania way. This is a drum of the gathering. Uh, this will knock wool off of sheep. And if you have buckets sitting around near a cow, it will milk them. It's activated with a mana pulse. So I have the cow here sitting on a redstone pressure plate, uh, on a weighted pressure plate. And so that gives it a power of one. If there are any more entities, then it will go into this redstone repeater, which will trigger this timer. Because I uh, once there's entities sitting there, it'll just be a constant signal, and this thing requires a pulse, and I found that it didn't always get it on the first pulse. So this timer is just an automagy hourglass, set to three seconds, repeat. So after three seconds it'll send a pulse, and that'll activate the drum, and that'll milk the cow. And up on top I have the ME interface. It has a pattern four blank buckets, to bucket of milk, and it has on here an item frame with a bucket of milk, so the hopper hawk will pick up filled buckets and put them into the ME interface and therefore into the system. So you'll see here that if I just craft, say, a hundred cakes, 
then it's going to require 300 buckets of milk. Well, frick. there it goes. Look at it go. Look at it go. Tons of milk just poofing up out of the ether. And there it went. 300 buckets of milk. Cakes crafted. Yep. Rune, crafty rune, crafty rune, ne rune, ne rune, crafty rune, crafty rune. Crafty, crafty rune, rune, crafty rune, crafty rune. Oh. Derp. Rune crafting doesn't consume runes. So, um. All I needed was like one rune of winter. Um, well, I can auto-craft cakes now. That's, uh, that's a thing. Okay, I've got a bunch of things assembled. So, I think the overall plan is going to be that these assembly tables, they can't be really redstone controlled, not directly. But I think I should have a means of controlling it indirectly. Do I have a free channel here? Yes, I do. So let's just put this here. Let's put the assembly table on top of that. And I think that should output automatically into the interface. So if I just run this on over, That should connect, tell it to stock redstone, okay, and output redstone chipsets, okay, and now up, say, here, just have collection of lasers, actually, no, wait, not going to do that on the ceiling because I need to run the power cable. There we go. Very pretty, colorful rainbow of things. Yeah, see, it's outputting into the Emmy interface just fine. So, what I'm going to do is over here on the power cable. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Not stuck. Okay. Over here, I'm going to have the any level emitter. And I should have grabbed the chipsets. And there it is. You can see it counting up. And I'm going to tell it... You know, see, because it's not programmed and it's emitting signal, it's cutting the power to that. So these things have a little bit of an internal buffer. It's enough that they are, you know, still going through the redstone. But after a little while, I think you can see it fading down there. No. You should be pretty dead. What the heck? What the heck? Where are you getting power from? Wait, are you maybe... Are you maybe transferring it from the any interface? That would be crazy. You're, you're not connected? Those, okay, those ultimate cables hold a little bit, but they don't hold that much. What the sand hell? Okay, let's... Okay, uh, yeah, I think they're glowing a little bit less brightly now. Hmm. Now it's just stopped altogether. So what the heck? Uh, 
Okay. Um, this is being utterly weird. Okay, so. First of all, let's set this down to 200, and let's see if that connection was the problem. Yeah, okay. So the problem is that for whatever reason, the power is not cutting, even though visually it's not connecting. So what the heck? Oh, there it goes. Now it, now it cut off. So is it just that it's kind of weird? Okay, so let's try up to 300. That kicks it on. Now down to 200. That should run out the buffer in a couple of seconds. Seriously, the internal buffer is not that big. Uh, okay. Well, I, I know that there is one problem here that I can fix. I just need to... Come on, dupe. And then dupe. There we go. And that'll keep it stocked full of redstone. Yeah, seriously, this is draining 360 RF per tick. I'm not sure what the internal buffer on those cables is, but it's not that big. And the lasers... Yeah, it, sh it should run out in like a couple seconds. Why? Just why? Maybe it's a problem with a loop? Yeah, see, I completely removed the central cable there, and the laser ran out in like two seconds. Kick it back on. There goes the laser. I mean, okay, well, since it's being utterly weird, I will just have to do this a bit more stupidly. And yes, you can hear from the ticking that um, I decided that I wanted to hold, like, a couple more alloys in my... So I, I, I just increased the storage for all three of them, just so that I have a huge buffer. Just, well, just because I can. Because I can. Okay, any level emitter on that? Okay. There we go. And that's not transferring. Okay. On the underside. And that should transfer. No. Oh, come on. <sighs> Why? Why? Why you know? Just, just cooperate with me. Just for one second. Okay, maybe... Maybe instead of crystal, maybe redstone dust sitting on the top will work. No, of course not. I guess I could be satisfied with just eight lasers in the assembly. Really? Uh, really? Oh my god. Well, okay, okay. I guess... I guess I will just put the... I'll, I'll do it like I first did, and I will just accept the fact that I will have, like, two or three hundred more chipsets than I think I should. Okay, let's just set it to, like, five hundred. And let's fill in this whole freaking mess. So, that should stop, like... Well, okay, it, it'll stop feeding it power when I have 500. And then with how frickin' ridiculously long that power buffer lasts, I'll probably end up with like 550 in storage. That's acceptable. 
The only reason I want to cut it off is just so that I don't end up having a billion in storage, eating up all of my drive space. So, an extra 50-odd is acceptable. If inexplicable. Okay, so that, that laser assembly is assembled. And look at that, all eight channels on this line. Okay, so next let's let's do something let, let's do something easy just so I can gain some sanity points. And then I think I'll call it a day. So did I make an auto crafting for an energized smelter? No. That's really easy. Note that now the only two things I don't have auto crafting on this are the osmium plates and the uh, enriched alloy. If I can get sources of that in, then I will be able to just auto craft these control circuits for frickin' ever. Which is kind of what I want, because for like some of the things that use advanced ones, I'll end up needing hundreds of them. Also, let's turn this off. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, energized smeltery. Let's take this on. And I'm just going to use this for um, things like bulk ordering smooth stone. So it's a really simple process that I'm going to be doing here. Yeah, I'll just run it off here. That's fine. So just like that. And just like that. Now, I believe that if I tell it input from the back, then the ME interface should be able to input into it. But it is still going to have to handle the output separately. which is really simple and easy. And then I just need to run a power cable to it. Just like so. Okay, okay. And now I should have an interface on here saying energized smelter and that one will actually stay on there. So I want over here in processing mode, let's say, I take cobblestone, I get smooth stone. Into there. And now I should be able to order, say, that. Yep, you just heard it kick on. It is smolting. And I'm just going to immediately upgrade that to a factory version. I need to get these installers auto-crafting anyway. Okay. And maybe I'll, up, I'll make installers for the other tiers. There we go. Set that to spread yes. And there we have it. I might make some muffling upgrades for that. But now I can just bulk order smeltable items from that thing. Really simple and easy. Uh, uh, I don't feel like doing the rolling machines right now. That, that stupid freaking laser thing kind of bummed me out just because it was so stupid. So I think that is enough for today. Next time on Regrowth, I think we'll do some quests. I'll see you then.